There are a bunch of hidden but very useful interactions, actions and mechanics in Dragon's Dogma 2 that the game doesn't really tell you about. However, you want to know about them as soon as possible, hence why we're starting off this video right away. Starting off with a question, have you been avoiding the water like a scaredy kitten? Well, not anymore after today. We're starting out with the brine, and honestly, water isn't as scary as you think it is in Dragon's Dogma 2. You can actually travel over the water and thus the brine if your class has some kind of skill that grants you momentum and moves your character. Just spam set ability to reach the other side. This can actually be a huge time saver. Those rivers that seem to cut off two areas and make you think you have to walk all the way around, not any longer. Just use this tip. And right away, another tip is that if you're fighting something and there's a river nearby, lure your enemy to it to then push into the water. Bosses are not immune to the brine. No, I repeat, bosses take it up a place where the sun don't shine when they fall in the brine. You can actually get rid of them real quick like this and get that juicy XP and DCP very fast. And it's also fun to see bosses get tortured like this. We need to talk about mass recovery. Your revive in this game is basically an AoE type of heal where if you recover one pawn, everything surrounding that pawn will recover too. This is very useful for, say, if your entire team is dead and you are in a dire situation in combat or if your amazing pawns decided to be very big brained and jump for instance off those giant ass cliffs to then have a completely dead party. Accordingly, instead of reviving each one by one and taking half a day, just throw them all together and start recovering one pawn of your choice. You will then recover your entire team in one go as you see. Also useful in combat when exactly two are dead and they are separated as your other pawn will drag the other dead pawn to you, so you move towards one dead pawn while your other pawn brings over the other dead pawn to you and you can recover both in one go. Are you still following me? But throwing to set up a mass recovery is one thing, but throwing in combat is even better. Outside of the obvious use case of, you know, having itchy fingers to pick up a foe or a friend and then throw them off a cliff for an instant kill, you can also use one enemy to one-shot another enemy while pretty much killing off the enemy you threw as well because the targeted enemy will bounce off and still deal damage like that too. As you see, throwing is a very powerful tool in Dragon's Dogma 2. You basically get rid of two or more pawns at the same time in style, whether it's through killing or CCing both pawns. Now, throwing inflammable barrels or barrels with other powerful substances is also another way to get an advantage in combat. Throwing in a more general sense is essentially a huge tool in Dragon's Dogma 2 to reposition anything in the game. Stuck NPCs or quest givers, pick them up, throw them en route back to your objective. Do you see a powerful pawn or a fighter or an NPC with a dangerous weapon in the wild but you have no room to recruit it? Well, pick it up and throw it at your next fight. They will start fighting with you. It's like a glitch in the matrix to make your party consist out of five instead of just the regular peasant 4. Really good tip if you want extra damage. Don't sleep on throwing, just like you don't want to sleep on the power of freezing time through accessing your inventory. Yes, you heard that right. You can access your inventory full with your potions and goodies at all times, even during combat, and it will freeze time completely. Now, first of all, make sure to loot as much as possible and combine everything you get, as you then will accordingly have a catalog of useful tools to use during combat. But since you can freeze time with your inventory, you can pause when you have no HP left. Sip a drink or a potion or eat something to revive your HP and you're back in the game. And it works consistently as you see from the various clips. You have to be quick though. Pretty much pressing the button the moment your HP reaches zero. As you see with these slimes, when you get grabbed by them, it is pretty much game over usually. But not anymore after today. Just like after today, you will know of completing escort quests really fast as you can use fairy stones to instantly go back to town if you don't want to do the escort missions. Whatever you're escorting will teleport with you for an instant quest completion. Can be useful if you don't want to be bothered but accidentally accepted the quest. But I hear you, what is a great way to get a lot of fairy stones? Well, thieves are a great tool. If you aren't one, then just recruit one from the rift with the plunder or pilfer skill. Bonus tip, you can use the bumpers to quickly check what kind of pawn you're recruiting and exactly all the skills, abilities and traits that your recruited pawn will have while you're walking in the rift. Very convenient. But if you are a thief, then make sure you plunder as many ghosts as possible. They have the possibility to give you three fairy stones with one plunder and the knight is ridden 
even with these ghosts, literally they're everywhere, making this a really amazing farm. But as a thief, you can also steal wake stones and just steal and do a lot of great things in general. If you want to know how to make sure to have a 100% success rate with stealing, but also other tricks, like for example, going over how to infinitely run as a thief without ever consuming any stamina, then you're in luck. Because I've already made an entire video dedicated to secret tricks and insane combos for the thief specifically. So definitely check that video out too, if you're interested in knowing more about that. But with wake stones mentioned, I also want to take a second to talk about dozing off to quickly pass time. Now any bench you find in the game can be used as a tool to skip time very fast. Just sit on it and spam the doze off button as much as you need to and you will skip like 6 hours or so every time you do so and can go through the entire cycle of day to night extremely fast. You can check wherever you are in the day with this day night cycle in your menu or you know just look at the sky but if you're checking it in the menu then it's the circle surrounding your map. So that is another tip but where I'm really going with this tip is that you can use it to complete quests quickly, do time gated events instantly but also for example abuse this mechanic to get a ton of wake stone shards very quickly. For example those level 2 pawns that you can recruit in the rift they will always give you a wake stone shard just by merely being with you for an entire day. So recruit two of them, abuse the bench and you get their rewards instantly. Dismiss them accordingly and rinse and repeat and with this technique you can get loaded on wake stones too very fast. And you might feel like you don't want to be bothered by going back to places that you've already visited and have cleared in your mind. But those places might now have actually changed. Your pawns will make a comment about it too, indicating that something has changed. Going back might give you new quests or you might just go back to a place that now looks and feels different this time around. But why? Well, you'll only know if you do it yourself. If in all your enthusiasm, while you're running back, you almost fall off a cliff, the game will save you somewhat and give you this animation, indicating no, you will not die today. But now we can use this animation to test if various fall lengths will kill our character, especially useful if your loss gauge has built up. Here is a side by side comparison. If you get the animation, you will usually die. If not, then you will usually survive. A niche tip, but can be very useful. A bit less niche, however, is using the right camping kits. As you don't really want to use the modest one, this thing is a complete scam. It doesn't work half the time and it's pretty much the wish version of the mundane one. They sound the same and they look exactly the same. But the mundane ones are infinitely better as you can keep reusing the same one while you traverse the lands of campfires. Yes, it is that practical. You can lose the modest one really easily due to raids and such. And there are even better camping kits than the mundane one out there as well. So keep an eye out for those. Just like you want to keep an eye out for making sure everyone in your party has a lantern. Four lanterns is a lot more light than just one or two. It makes life a lot easier when traveling in the night. And you might get pawns that don't have them when you recruit them. If any of your pawns lantern runs out of oil, give him or her oil and they will automatically keep fueling their own lantern. Now speaking of nights, the in-game tutorial of the game kind of makes it sound like the night is very scary and must be avoided at all times. Well, it is true if you don't have four lanterns, but thankfully you do so going forward thanks to a certain tip. I personally like the night. Yes, your overall vision is reduced in the night and the night is filled with scary monsters and undead, but that means extra XP and discipline points and I'll take those at all times, no matter the cost. Also, the night provides you a lot of new encounters that the day doesn't provide. Those places with graves, suspicious empty and quiet during the day. <laughs> In the night is where the real party is at, and certain bosses that give amazing loot spawn only in the night too. Consider that too. But the benefits don't end there. The rarest of the rarest loot is much easier to find as well. For example, those seeker tokens that during the day are like searching for a needle in a haystack, and you need 220 of them for amazing rewards, well, during the night they shine bright like a diamond and are much easier to fetch. The night is also ridden with secret encounters like the phantom ox guard, and have you already found it? Well, if you do, make sure it doesn't disappear forever. Just like your teammates or your pawns are diamonds too, even in the more niche ways. And I'm talking specifically outside of combat. Your fighter, for example, can propel you into the air to get to otherwise hard to reach spots. Very convenient. Or you can instruct your ranged characters to clear something that you can't clear. But maybe you're playing as a mage and you have gone a bit too wild with levitating. Well, just make sure one of your pawns is beneath you and they will catch you. 
teamwork or a mage that you can instruct to levitate to get loot for you that is otherwise inaccessible for you but if you have levitate yourself it's actually an amazing tool for going over those broken bridges too don't worry about your team as they can literally just teleport and be instantly with you again check out the map for how they possess the amazing ability of teleporting why can't we teleport all the time like that and you can use this teleport mechanic of your pawns by for example pointing at something that you can't reach and they also can't reach from your side basically what the ai will then do is maneuver your pawns all the way across the other side to then approach whatever you want like a chest from that side so it's basically like a cheese to figure out how to get to stuff that you can't reach from one side or a very beefy character for example a warrior or a fighter that you can not only use as a tank in combat but also in the world the size of your pawns and your own character is tied to their max encumbrance so it's nice to always have at least one beefy tall pawn as a companion that you can use as a loot tank if that's a thing and just give them all the loot and if you decide miss or you lose them somehow then your loot that they store will instantly get back to your storage box which is double nice because you don't have to manually deposit everything it's a win-win situation really just like using port crystals cleverly is now there are a set port crystals in the game but you can also get your own port crystal that you can place anywhere in the world so naturally the question arises what is a tactical and useful place to put these well the game doesn't tell you obviously it is up to you but good spots will be maybe near a farm for certain and materials but also near an inn where you can rest and store everything quickly after an epic adventure and with a fairy stone and a port crystal right near the inn you will do so extremely fast or even better in front of your house as resting there is free technically and you can store there everything as well but if you don't use fairy stones then ox cards are your thing maybe but the game tells you extensively about ox cards so you probably already know about that however did you know that you can travel with them while they are already en route to their destination as well make sure to keep an eye out on the routes that the ox cars usually use to travel to see if you can board mid trip but you can also use this the other way around obviously you can use an ox cart to drop halfway to the next city or so using these raids can be useful if you want to fast travel to somewhere that isn't the city but rather somewhere en route to the city do you also by the way know that you can see exactly everything that you still need to discover especially handy for those that want to fully complete the game 100 percent you can zoom into the areas that are still hidden or brown on your map to see exactly what terrain has passed to indicate that there is still terrain there that you have to explore. This way you can differentiate really easily between impassable areas like mountains and actual content. Now I've seen a lot of people not differentiating between the different schools of smithing in this game. When you're enhancing your equipment you can always check what kind of smithing is going to be applied to your gear in the right upper corner. If yeah, for you forgot what city you're in for example. But the sound summary of the different schools is that there are four different styles of smithing that all have their perks. Here is a comparison of what happens when you upgrade the same gear piece across the various smithing schools. Vermilion is going to be the standard one and gives you balanced upgrades. However, Bathali gives you the most strength, so it's excellent for warriors, thieves, fighters, while Elven gives you the most magic, excellent for sorcerers, magic archers and such, and Dwarven gives you increased knockdown power, which again is a great CC tool and is very good for say hybrid vocations or locations that make good use of that like a mystic spare hand dwarven is also a great defensive upgrade for if you feel like you get knocked down a lot as it gives you the most knockdown resistance while elven will focus on magic defense and bathali will focus on physical defense now finally another thing to consider is that the verminion and elven actually lower the weight of your stuff while bathali and dwarven will increase the weight so if that's an important factor for you then make sure to keep that in mind too so make sure to consider what school you're going depending on the vocation that you're running this way you can really optimize and min max your build as much as physically possible and finally we're going to end the video with one of my favorite tricks those harpy snare smoke beacons that you acquire well they're fantastic tools for getting to hard to reach spots drop one down and it will blast off a beautiful smoke which will in turn lure a harpy from wherever right to you grab onto the harpy and don't make the mistake of torturing your pawns by accident while doing so and just fly with your new pet to the desired location. It will be a beautiful trip where you and your new pet can bond. And that chest you couldn't get to earlier, well, you've made it. The easiest trick of your life to get a lot of extra chests that you otherwise thought were impossible to reach. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you liked it. If you did, make sure to give the video a like, subscribe, you know what to do, all that kind of stuff. And let me know your thoughts in the comments.